Let's go to Germany. It's Scott in Germany, my homeland. Scott, how are you doing? Oh, nice. Hey, I'm doing good. Good to speak yes. with you. Um, continue what you were talking about with Barney Frank and the housing uh, market and all that. I mean, was there one person, one politician on the House Banking and Financial Services Committee that was trying to warn us, the American people, of this coming, you know, market collapse? I mean, it seemed like Barney Frank and the rest of them were just following in suit. Like, don't worry, everything's going to be fine. But was there not one person out there that was trying to warn us about this? Well, uh, gee, that's a good question, and I haven't, I haven't looked at that question. Uh, well, the was answer. there somebody was, on the... I, I have the answer. It was Congressman Ron Paul, and he's been around... Was it Ron Paul? Everything. Okay. Yeah. And uh, that's... Uh, so I'm, I just want to spin into what I called about. It was foreign policy, and a lot of people don't like Ron Paul because of his foreign policy. They like his economic... Well, I, you know, Trump. this has nothing to do with foreign policy. I mean... Oh, if, I agree, I agree. I was okay. just... Uh, that's what I called and, about. And but, yeah, I agree with I've you on the it, housing market. Yeah, slow down. Slow down. I've, I've made it clear that uh, I admire Ron Paul on a number of issues even though he doesn't like me all that much, but I have a problem with him insofar as foreign policy is concerned. I mean, there's a lot of people in that in that boat. But yeah, I agree. Now, so you're telling me that at the time, our government was telling these banks, either you loan money to these people, the, these, these, uh, you go out, find people who can't buy a ho uh, can't afford a house, loan them money to buy a house, or you're going to go out of business, and you're telling me that at that time Ron Paul was warning us about this? Yeah, he was. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not at a computer right now. I don't know if it was 2002 or 2003, but you can just go on YouTube, type in Joe Scarborough, Bar uh, Joe Scarborough, MSNBC, Ron Paul. It's got the whole interview on it, and okay. you get no press coverage on this stuff. Well, that's impressive. I'm, I, that is truly impressive. That I did not know. And are you in the military over in Germany? Yes, sir. And, uh, I mean, I started waking up to everything that was going on because I got stationed in the, on the border of North Korea uh, on Camp Casey. And this is when I finally started understanding how our foreign policy ties into our economy and the big picture. A lot of people just think of them as two separate entities, and they're not. I mean, look at um, Huntsville, Alabama with Redstone Arsenal. Look at Augusta, Georgia with Fort Gordon. Half of their economy, or a good third of it, relies on these huge bases. And there's, I, I saw, you know, with my travels with the military, these enormous cities that spring up that would not be there if we didn't have, you know, a Camp Red Cloud in Weejeonbu, South Korea, or a Camp Casey in Dongnashan, South Korea. I mean, these cities would not exist, and they're huge cities. They're very large, okay. and they would not even be there. It would just be farmland. That's a lot of money that we could bring back to our economy over here at home if we would just bring all our troops back. Well, you see, that's the part of the foreign policy that I don't go along with. Uh, some nation, you know, bring all our troops back. Okay, there's going to be a void. If we bring all our troops back, there's going to be a void. So, who steps in to fill that void? Here's the reality, folks. Some nation is going to dominate the world militarily. Now, you may not want that nation to be the United States. That's fine. That's fine. You don't want the United States to be the dominant military force in the world. That's fine. But recognize, some nation is going to be the world's dominant military force. So if you do not want that to be the United States, if you want to bring all our troops home, if you don't want it to be the United States, Great. The only thing I ask of you is to tell me what state, what nation you want that to be. Because somebody's going to dominate. Somebody's going to be the 800-pound gorilla. Somebody's going to be the big dog. If you don't want it to be the United States, tell me what nation you want that to be. I'd love to know. And by the way, the United States test fired a missile yesterday. Belinda, you're really... Uh, this is Neil Bortz. Okay, now I have a speech from Ron Paul on the House of the... floor of the U.S. House of Representatives, July 16th of 2002. Let me see what I got here. Okay, now, Belinda, listen to this. Everybody, listen to this. This is pretty impressive.
This is Ron Paul, July 2002. Mr. Speaker, I rise to introduce the Free Housing Market Enhancement Act. This legislation restores a free market in housing by repealing special privileges for housing-related government-sponsored entities. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, National Home Loan Bank Board, one of the major government... Well, let's see, uh, I want to get to the most of it. The Free Housing Market Enhancement Act repeals the explicit grant of legal authority given to the Federal Reserve to do the Ironically, by transferring the risk of widespread mortgage default, the government increases the likelihood of a painful crash in the housing market. This is because the special privileges of Fannie, Freddie, and HLBB have distorted the housing market by allowing them to attract capital they could not attract under pure market conditions. As a result, capital is diverted from its most productive use into housing. This reduces the efficiency of the entire market and reduces... Uh, then listen to this. The long-term damage to the economy inflicted by the government's interference in the housing market, the government's policies of diverting capital to other uses creates a short-term boom in housing. Like all artificially created bubbles, the boom in housing prices cannot last forever. When housing prices fail, homeowners will experience difficulty as their equity is wiped out. This is 2002. And Ron Paul was telling people exactly what was going to happen. 2002. But Barney Frank, oh no, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, they're doing a great job. He says, he said, abolish Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, replace them with nothing. Let the housing market normalize. America is hurting while the Federal Reserve's cronies and Fannie Mae and Freddie, while they enjoy full employment and jackpot bonuses. See? Even I can learn. All right. You're listening to Bort's information. No, to Presidential Power Hour is on the way. Stay there. And there was a poll out yesterday from Rasmussen that had him up 13 points in Iowa. Okay, if that's the case, if Gingrich is going to win Iowa, then we're having an entirely dis different discussion about where this race goes. Now, let, let me ask you this. I just found something that you know, a caller pointed it to me. Bless these callers. Yes. This is a floor speech by Ron Paul in 2002 where he is saying just exactly what is going to happen with the housing market, just exactly what is going to happen with home values if Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac aren't reined in. You know what? The more people that hear how close Ron Paul nailed it nine years ago, it's things like this that enhance your appeal. Yes, except for his foreign policy, which except will, will not win him many converts among the GOP establishment. Well, somebody tweeted me, said, so now you're on the Ron Paul train? I said, nope, still the foreign policy issue. Yeah, and it is for a lot of people. But Paul, uh, let's, let's give him his due. He's had four different polls uh, over four days this week in which he's shown very strong double-digit numbers in both Iowa and New Hampshire. Now, I don't know if that means that uh, as Herman Cain falls that Gingrich is picking up some of those people, and Paul is picking up some, too. Uh, sort of mixed signals on...